especially those field light temperatures. We'll have field light temperatures anywhere from 105 to 110. Now, the only thing that we have in place is going to be a special weather statement. So as always, make sure to listen to your body, especially if you work outside or if you are going to be doing some errands. Drink plenty of water, take breaks, whether that's in the shade or inside where there's AC. And unfortunately, we also have to deal with the haze once again, but the haze is rather light. We're not going to see that thickness because most of it has traveled north and east. But was it going to be like for the weekend? If you have some weekend plans, well, we'll take a closer look and track everything out doing your full forecast in just a couple minutes. Danielle. Thanks so much, Brianna. Well, outdoor high school athletes are already underway and it raises a big concern over heat safety. Janelle Tanguma gives us a look at some new guidelines that are introduced by UIL and how one Valley football team is implementing them. For outdoor sports in Texas. Being able to come out here early in the morning, uh, we're able to dodge uh, some of the heat and get to make sure that we can get our workouts in. You have to do what you can to beat the heat. That's why the UIL has released protocols and procedures for the 2024-25 school year aimed at preventing heat-related illnesses in student-athletes. UIL passed out the guidelines that says now anything that above 80, we have to have um, rapid cooling zones. And we have cooling zones, we have Mr. Sprays, we have everything ready for these kids. Athletic trainers at Harlingen South High School say they've been using the recommended wet bulb globe temperature scale to dictate modifications in outdoor activity. The WBGT uses a color-coded system to determine if normal activities can take place or if practice times should be adjusted or canceled. Along with the recommended WBGT guidelines, schools are also required to have rapid cooling zones on site for athletes experiencing heat illnesses. The rapid response is the main thing. That's why those cooling zones are in place. We lift them, put them in, and we dunk them in cold water, and we're trying to reduce their core uh, uh, temperature from increasing. We want to rapidly cool them down as, possible, as fast as possible. Schools are also required to have an emergency action plan with dedicated treatments for heat emergencies. These protocols and procedures apply to all outside UIL sports and marching band activities. Moving forward into the start of the season and the start of some longer and more demanding practices, Coach Israel Gonzalez says addressing the heat and keeping the athletes safe will be a top priority. Parents are entrusting us with their most prized possession, and we want to make sure that we're doing our job to make sure that those kids stay safe, come out here, have fun, and get to play a game that they love. Well, the staff at Harlingen South High School tell us that they believe it won't be long before UIL makes these recommendations a requirement, adding that it's a step in the right direction toward protecting student athletes. And Gregory Norris is facing murder charges in connection to a fentanyl overdose. San Benito police accuse Norris of being a drug supplier. Investigators say that he's responsible for the death of 32-year-old Arnoldo Garcia Jr. back in March. A search of Garcia's cell phone re revealed messages to and from Norris about drugs, and he admitted to supplying Garcia with the substances. Norris's bond is set at $500,000. And people in Donna are back at home after an explosive device forced them to evacuate. Police got a call about a suspicious device inside an empty mobile home on FM 493. An explosive device was found and now investigators are searching for 31-year-old Cristalina Cervantes. She was evicted from the property earlier this week and if you know where she is, call Donna Police. All right, and take a look at your screen. Do you recognize this man? Brownsville police say that last Friday around 3.45 p.m., he entered an easy pawn shop on Southmost Road with a rifle and demanded money. No one was hurt, but if you know anything about this robbery or know who this man is, call Brownsville Crime Stoppers, and your tip could lead to a cash reward. And the Sullivan City Police Department wants to warn you about a scam. If someone is calling you, asking for money or some sort of payment, do not give out any personal information. Now, this is a list of what a scammer could do. They could ask you to send money through a cash app like Venmo or Zelle, or ask for you to wire transfer, send a gift card, or even a cryptocurrency. Scanners could also claim for work uh, to work rather for a government agency or a bank or a retailer, even a dating app. So if you feel like you've fallen victim to a scam, Call the police department. 
All right, and there are just a few weeks of summer vacation left before students go back to, uh, to school, and that means many changes. Artificial intelligence will play a big role in their learning this year, and Brian Svensson spoke with an educator about what the expansion of AI means for students as well as teachers. There's a lot of potential out there for AI, but I, we also know that we have to be responsible as well. Jessica Rushka with the Harlingen Independent School District says she thinks the AI revolution is a lot like the early days of the internet. It's a tool that students can use to enhance their education, but not a substitute for learning the material and doing the schoolwork. Our train of thought is more like, how do we not say you cannot use AI? It's okay to say, what are the best four sources out there for this topic? And then you go do the research. It's not okay to say, hey, I need a paper on this topic and let it write it for you and copy and paste. Rushka says last year, Harlingen CISD came up with problem solving teams to figure out the best way to roll out AI in the classrooms. She says they focused on learning goals and district policy regarding the use of AI. Administrators, teachers, and students can collaborate to figure out the best practices the district can adopt. Going from that start of innovation goals all the way to student integration. So we do plan on really prepping our systems first and our policies first, our teachers, and then really training the students on how to efficiently use AI in the classroom. The district says it's working on getting that system in place this year and having the whole framework in place for the start of next school year. AI isn't only affecting the students. Rushka says there's also been a push to train teachers who haven't always been entirely receptive to the idea. It almost was like a mindset of a negative, right? That AI was a negative. And I think it's about exposing our teachers to the positive sides of AI, understanding how it can help with their administrative tasks, right? Rushka says there have been a few times students used AI to do their work for them, but she says having students work on projects during class time and having multiple writing samples from each student can cut down on those issues. Dr. Rushka also says that AI features like text to image could help special education students get ahead. Artificial intelligence would also help nonverbal students express themselves by typing prompts into an AI generator program. All right, coming up, one wasp species that makes honey and another that captures tarantulas. Details in your outdoor report. And coming up to your full forecast, we'll take a closer look at those hot temperatures for today.